Hello my soccer universe! I'm gonna report now on the first match in the new stadium for Lusk. Uh, hold it, I will give you all the good and the bad uh, from the stadium itself and from the game. But because I'm doing that, it will, as the background already indicates, only be a video about the Austrian Bundesliga, um, the results in Germany. While some interesting things, I think think it is I'll do it all with uh, since there's another big game coming uh, the week after so in a week we'll talk then a little bit more uh, about Germany however uh, the major part of this video will be my family and me going up to the new stadium and watching the first game on Friday evening you've seen already uh, two short videos up there I have one up there where you see my first impression from the new stadium uh first with me <laughs> scanning around and then without win and then of course the historic first goal yes last one but it was not a pretty win unfortunately but all bit by bit you know um you know that i live up on the hill above linz and when you drive down and yes the stadium is also on the hill but on the other side of the danube you already see the stadium uh which is really cool and you all already could see at night um that while the lights are on it is by far not as bright it is very on the inside it's all led that's uh below the roof so the light emissions from the stadium are not that big it's actually even when you walk up to the stadium it is really hard to make out the stadium. I mean, I know where it is, but I, I remember my little one asking, where is the stadium, where is the stadium? Yes. When you're there in front of the stadium, uh, honestly, it is almost was almost a little bit dark. I think they could have, they should invest a little bit more lights around the stadium because I don't want to know what could happen otherwise. I think this is one uh, thing, but once we figured out the way and i have to say it was weather wise a pretty dreary night it was not a uh, full out raining but it was cold and it had this light drizzle all the time that sometimes was a little bit more rainy uh so yeah i, I would have wished for a little bit you know at least a dry weather which also had an effect on the, on the game but once we found a way to the um, our section uh, which is behind the goal on this uh part that has never been there have never been seats because the stadium used to be open uh or um when in the old stadium so that was all already exciting you know we're the first ones among the first ones to sitting there and then you go to the stadium and i think the first time where i really said wow there is this little um you know you can see through onto the field and into the stadium from the outside and i saw already that about an hour before kickoff the entire seating section was filled with a huge banner the schwarz weißen götter sind zurück am olymp which means the black and white gods are back on mount olympus uh which kind of i mean i we we uh, i we always call them the black and white gods uh, because that's so crappy it's kind of an inside joke among last fans but you know um so be it but since the stadium is up on the hill the froschberg the frog mountain <laughs> or the google no it's actually the froschberg is one where that it's the it's called the google uh since it's up on the hill uh make it that the back on the mount olympus in that sense makes a little bit sense but that was i did not expect that i mean i know they had an opening program and they said they will be there uh but that the entire standing section and it's a really impressive stand. I mean, it holds four and a half thousand. Yes, it's not Dortmund. But for Austria, uh, this is pretty big. That the entire standing section was filled. I was mega impressed by that. Uh, and from reports that I read is it was almost a little bit overfilled because, you know, some people had to stand on the stairs going down or, or whatever. It was maybe that was also something. And um, the kiosks were a little bit overwhelmed by the mass of the people we on our side did not have that problem because it was all seating room and you know you go in uh it was all uh, rather clear there were no checks whatsoever which was a little bit weird i have to say but i understand that uh, this is the first time that the stadium had a little bit of bigger crowd and you and the people you know you have to get it going and have to be trained with everything but you know it's all nice you uh, scan the ticket you walk in uh go up 
Then, of course, the first thing, a little one needed to go to the toilet, of course. Uh, so we had to find the toilets where um, I was surprised we could go under the away section, which is between the behind the goal and then on the side. We could go under and found and found it there. Uh, we I realized later there was a closer one, but OK, so be it. Um, and then we also got our drinks. And that was the, the next thing. I mean, yes, it's all um, uh, contactless payment. In a, in, a, in a way, so you can only go with, with, with credit card and, and, and so on, so no cash. Um, which for me is actually all right, but I think for most Austrians it's not, but I'm living more or less without cash. So uh, right for me. Um, you get your cups and the cups are filled from the bottom. That was interesting. And then they're still sealed. I still have to figure out how that one works. <laughs> But it's filled very, very quickly. Um, uh, you have to leave two euros for the cup, but it's then booked back once you return it onto your card. So I think that was also fine. Uh, that worked actually quite uh, well. The one thing that did not work well, we wanted to have um, an apple juice with sparkling water. We got pure apple juice. Yes, we did not drink beer because I was driving and the kiddos and so on. We did not need <laughs> We did not need that for at least for now. So yeah, uh, prices, of course. A little bit high, but no, no plastic bottles. So, uh, you know, uh, and I also saw what they were offering food wise. I actually have to say for stadium food, I think this was rather good and it was all nicely done. Toilets looking good, uh, everything looking good, but you could see already go going in. There's still work to be done in, in the stadium. You know, there were some, uh, you see some vents and so on. Um, that are not covered. Uh, it all looks a little bit uh, raw still. Uh, the signage was also good. We could find our seats and we go down. I mean, first is, of course, you see the stadium and uh, the inside, it looks pretty cool. I have to say that the business clubs on the side, um, they look all absolutely ridiculously um, well done. And it looks all very high quality. And we even saw the entrance to the business club where, you know, there are escalators. It all looks super well done. The one thing that I have, I have to say, though, is that the lighting in there, there are colors in there that have nothing to do with Lusk. There's a lot of pink, yellowish, greenish, uh, and yellow, uh, greenish and yellowish is actually, actually Austria Luston offense, uh, which I found a little bit odd. I also, uh, you could also make out quickly that on the sides the lower stand was pretty much nicely sold out but the upper was the upper section was tarped over and on the business side and this remained this way is that the lower section was completely empty yes the cameras are not there but that looked really bad i mean then a level up where then the business seats are this filled but that the lower ones were empty i found rather disappointing uh and yeah didn't fill me with a lot of joy there. Um, I also saw then in TV that the section where we were sitting was maybe not as full as I perceived it to be, but where we were sitting, it was rather full. And now that there's next so we go up the state there, it's rather steep, which is cool because wherever you sit, you don't have a big body sitting in front of you, which is especially important for the kids who are not that tall and they could sit and see the, 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 the field. Now we were in the fourth row relatively low down like above the level of the goal and pretty close to the action and i realized very 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 quickly the way we are sitting if there is the first goal scored on our side yeah we'll be on tv there's no way about it of course when we saw the game uh, after on the other side you don't see as well but you have a, you have a good view of the entire field and then i also have have to say I was really impressed. The seats are relatively comfy and well done. I mean, they have all, you know, it's not uh, the straight things. It, it, it's really uh, ergonomically formed. They are, they are comfortable. There is a space. There's also space up, uh, up front. Uh, it, I was rather impressed by that. What I was not impressed, though, is since it was raining, the first four rows, we were sitting in row four, were already a little bit wet, although the whole stadium is covered. Couldn't we put the roof a little? I mean, I know this is the, uh, the roof a little bit, uh, and make sure that this is not cover. Uh, it, it is not all doused down there. That would have made maybe some a little thing, 
that could could have done, but in, in the end it didn't matter. I mean, only at the beginning of, of, of the game there was a little drizzle uh, coming, but we knew it already from dressing that it was also fine with blankets. So uh, in that sense, we were fine. It was a cold night, but it was all good. Now, uh, for the opening, they had a lady singing the Upper Austrian Anthem, um, which is very American. And of course, the ultras don't like that and were chanting during that all the time. Uh, I'm going bit by bit. Yeah, I understand why. On the other side, you know, it's a special grand grand opening. Then they had a, a famous violinist um, playing some tunes on an electric violin uh, like the last 10 minutes before kick off. Uh, I thought that the pre pro program was a little bit, uh, you know, they tried, you know, let, let's see how is the mood in the different stands. And they started at the away fans, who of course, da, 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 and then of course, some Lynx fans, I had to uh, whistle them, which I thought, okay, anytime. But for the grand opening, be happy to then. Of course, that already swung then uh, the entire mood of the away section already against uh, the other. And, and you know, yeah, so, so be it. Football fans, what can you say? <laughs> Okay, game starts, the away sector uh, goes ablaze, but most importantly, the last sector with a huge banner coming down. It was really impressive. It was really impressive what they did. It said, Stadion of the Google, which means Stadion on the Google, which is the hill where the stadium is in. It's not the Reif as a Stadion of the Google, uh, which is also a very generic name, <laughs> if you would ask me. Um, and yeah, then the game kicked off. And that's where the fun stopped. <laughs> In a way. Uh, well, what can I say? Uh, the game was not great. Lusk had maybe in the last 20 minutes um, a really a few good chances where they probably should have scored. And I found it interesting that Lusk immediately chose to play to the uh, to the standing uh, area kind of, you know, celebrate in front of the fans the first goal. Uh, but yeah, was not much happening. I think Lusnow did it really well. 
overall uh, they defended quite well and Lusk had some real trouble I also thought that the pitch was rather wet and you could see it was a new grass Lusk players were rather unstable on that pitch uh, there were so many slippages I gotta say uh, that was actually a little bit concerning for me then I thought in the second half the way that the first half finished I thought second half yeah mm -hmm, it's gonna happen and then nothing literally nothing there was one shot in the 76th minute, and I know it because my I, my girl made me aware of it. A shot from Goinger who had come, 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 come on. And I have to say that the lineup for Coach Cooper had six changes. It was actually a surprise lineup. Uh, I'm not sure how well it, well it worked because as soon as he brought the regular play players on, it, it, it looked a teeny bit better, maybe. But you know, uh, so, so, so be it. But there was a shot by Goinger, went over the goal, but straight at us. And it was so because there's a net. If there was all that, that, it would have hit one of one of the four of us. <laughs> we were laughing at you, and you can even see that uh, on the highlights that I'm linking up there. Actually, uh, how we are, you uh, you will see in that my wife is the one with the black and white scarf right there, and then there's two pink jackets, which are my girls, and then next to it, I'm I in all black because I did not wear my jersey there. I mean, I had it under the jacket, but it was not uh, time to wear it like that. So yeah, uh, I told my older daughter who was sitting right next, next to me when the second half started, you know, if the first goal in the stadium is scored on our side, we'll be in the TV and we'll make history. We'll be in history. And the whole time she was yelling, come Lask for knock into a Lask forward score. I want to be in history. <laughs> it was so cute. But the moment never seemed to come. It actually seemed that uh, Austria Luster was going to score. And then I have to say it was a scandalous decision. Uh, Flecker going ahead to come off with an injury. Uh, Flecker comes on and shortly thereafter... He goes into uh, the box, there's a ball that he wants to catch, he slips and then he gets a uh, contact by Turkmen. Falls down. And you could see, I mean, it was right in front of us. And I thought, oh, that was the chance. Because this was like 91st minute or something like that. Yeah, okay, he couldn't reach it. And then you hear the whistle from the referee, he points penalty. And yeah! That I we were looking around and I look at other people and, and it, but the, the consensus was I didn't see that. Checking on VAR, no nope. penalty. It never was a penalty, and it's a huge uproar uh, in Austria, which I actually also didn't like. This was a mega missed call, and then Lubitschip steps up. <laughs> okay, let's get out. And so Lusk wins it 1-0. Lucky, 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 lucky. I have to say, overall, the experience in the stadium, if the game would have been better, I think it would have been the best experience. But thanks to the late goal, we left in really high mode. I mean, my little one was so, yeah, we were so lucky. We were so lucky. It was so cute to be with, uh, with, with them. And so, yeah, it uh, was really a fun experience, I gotta say. Um, the game let us down and the discussions on the referee, I think, reached a different level. Yes, alternate referees at the moment are not good. I have to say the VAR probably should have said something that they have to look at this big, uh, on the screen. I don't know why they didn't. Uh, the referee was even... He, 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 he admitted then later on yeah, it was a missed call and that uh, it all went the wrong way. I honestly feel this was kind of, yeah, we need to give a it really felt that you need to give Lusk that uh, <laughs> that win in in a way. It really felt. That, I'm very happy about it, but I have had to say, 
Uh, this was a scandalous call. Absolute scandalous call. However, I also I wanna uh, st step back. Refereeing is the shittiest job in soccer. And it's really hard to make decisions. Yes, we can improve. We can improve the way decisions are made. There is no doubt about that. Uh, However, saying that this referee should be banned now forever and so on and so forth, I think is also not the thing. With that win, Lusk qualified for the upper playoff. So uh, the next games that I'm going to see are all uh, against top teams, which will be interesting, let's say the least, because we're sitting very close to the away section. That's it for the last game. Let's look at the other results uh, from that from, from, from the round. Austria Vienna got a big win over Hartberg, which moves also closer to the upper playoff, so the championship playoff, where Sturm Graz had a shock loss at home 2-1 uh, to Austria Klagenfurt, despite uh, taking early through Affengrub in the 11th, but two minutes later he scores an own goal. Then it was level and the Markus Pink, who is the leader in the scoring charts, uh, gets a win, Sturm Graz hitting twice the post. Doesn't matter much for Sturm Graz because the second one is the second place is rather safe for them. Yes, Lask are now moving within uh, five points, but it's still rather rather safe. But it's also a huge one for Austria Klagenfurt because they now have a, a slight chance of catching Austria Vienna, as we will see. Altach against Tirol is a nil nil. Altach, despite having um, some good players and, and so on, still have to get yet a win. But that was a good one. Uh, afterwards, a Tirol defender also made a big rant against Austrian referees. So, you know, there is something growing. Rapid Vienna had already a 2 0 lead at the half in Wolfsburg, with Paribo only pulling one back uh, and not finding the e e e equalizer. So, Wolfsburg also um, moving more towards the lower uh, levels, whereas Rapid is right behind Lusk uh, also close to securing this uh the, the place in the upper playoff and then salzburg easy win over last place read uh capaldo and coita scoring the two uh two goals but two more have been jogged off for offside and salzburg does keeps on winning 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 of course they're the big favorites to win it all as we can see in the standings although it's a little bit tighter than one might expect um as I said, it's between Austria, Vienna and Austria Klagenfurt to for this last spot. I think Tirol look rather safe at this very, 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 very moment. Um, and it's basically the top six is also what we expect, but there has been quite some movement uh, in the lower level. Only the last team gets relegated. At the moment, Hartberg is occupying that spot if we look at the expected final standings, but it's a really, really tight race between Alter Ried and Hartberg. Upcoming two rounds, we have Rapid against Salzburg. It's always a big one. Lask has have to play at Tirol. Uh, Lustwein hosts Sturm Graz. So let's see where uh, this is going. But we have to, of course, uh, see Austria Vienna have to go to Ried. Um, I don't know what Wolfgang Klangfurt play at Alt Al 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 I think this will go more Austria Wien's way. And then the next round, I just put it up there. For now, it's all scheduled to be Sunday at five because it's the last two rounds of the um, of the uh, regular season, if you like. Uh, but I think there will be some movement around because Lask Salzburg might have no implications whatsoever because both of them are already qualified. So I could see this going on a Saturday slot, uh, for instance. Uh, but that will be a game will be going. I have no high hopes. Um, with Austria Vienna playing at Sturm Graz, with Klagenfurt have an easy one against Hart, 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 Hart Becker. This might actually swing things. That was it for me from Austria. Yeah, it was a longer video, but I really thought I need to give you all the details on the new stadium. Uh, it was a fun experience. Uh, by the way, I've been wearing this golden jersey because it's the one that has the name sponsor uh, of the stadium on the sleeves. Other than that, there's no other reason for that. Any case, um, I saw your nice reactions to my short videos and the other one. Um, I was really pleased with that. If you have any other questions about the stadium and so on, please comment below. Or if you uh, want to know something more, you want to add anything, I'd be more than happy. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll surely talk to you soon. Bye. 
Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!